I went into this movie expecting it to be a fun time. Video wise it looked good and the basic idea of it sounded like it'd make for a pretty entertaining movie. But man, I didn't expect it to be as good as it was. Now let's talk about 2019 School Live. Or School Live. Yeah. School L-I-V-E exclamation point. When a zombie plague spreads through Japan, a group of girls and their teacher just managed to survive as the school turns to chaos. And from there on, we watch as the group live in the school, taking life one day at a time as they wait out the virus in hopes for one day to be rescued. Before going any further, if this is a J-horror movie you want to check out, you should probably just do so, because I'm going to get into some heavy spoilers. <laughs> Which typically is to be expected, and I don't typically give spoiler warnings, but since this one came out in 2019, eh, sure. If you've been meaning to see it and haven't, spoiler warnings. Gonna ruin some twists for you. So the main characters are Kurumi, a girl with a love interest, Yuri, the other main girl, Miki, the survivor they find in the school who eventually warms up to them and becomes a member of their club, Megune, a really sweet teacher, and Yuki, the best character. So when it comes to Yuki, I think she was just really depressed, but trying to keep everybody else happy. Or maybe she was just in denial and seeing things as normal. I don't really know. But she was a very cheerful character who acted like everything was normal, and only seemed to acknowledge the world they were now living in about 5-ish minutes around the time they discovered the reanimated corpse of someone. And we're going to spoil that someone now. Megane died sometime early on, before the post-apocalyptic events of the movie, and anytime we see her, it's from Yuki's point of view, because she either pretends or believes she's still there. Which, when I think about it, maybe it was that she honestly believed it, and only realized the reality of things after seeing her corpse? Because there's one scene where she's running away with Megane, and when she loses her, she starts screaming for her. I mean, if it was just an act to pretend things were normal, I keep it up when you're all alone. Anyway, if Megane was all pretend, which I kinda suspected. So there's a lot of times when you'll see the girls going about their business or having fun and Magane is never around, or when the group are sleeping, she's completely absent. This made me question if she was a figment of their imagination or not, and I still didn't know until the moment she appeared ahead of Yuki, said to follow her, and heads into a room. I felt like her reaction should have been to run to Yuki to check on her, but that's not what she did. This is the moment where Yuki heads into the room and finds the reanimated corpse. But thankfully though, she tied herself down before reanimating so she wouldn't hurt them. I love the stuff we got with these characters, and I thought all the cast was pretty good, but Yuki and Magane specifically were the best characters in my opinion. Moving on from characters, this movie isn't a basic horror movie, or not the typical J-horror you'd expect anyway. It's more of a drama thriller with a touch of comedy when it felt appropriate. I could be wrong, but I think this is a teen movie. The characters were good, the story was good, and the movie just a fun time overall. Whenever I think of teen movies, at least the type of teen movies we have here, I immediately just think of a bunch of 20 or 30 somethings playing teenagers, they drink, they smoke, they make out, and cause some drama. There might be a relationship issue in the story, one of them might be a bad guy, that type of shit. So when it comes to teen movies here, normally I wouldn't go to my way to watch one, but this shit was pretty good. Also, so I don't mean like PG-13 movies, I mean movies that are branded as like being a teen movie. So something like The Ring or Happy Death Day, those are different. Those aren't teen movies just because they're PG-13. Which I feel like most of you know and most of you get that, but I know some people don't know so yeah. Anyway, the soundtrack was good too, and going back to horror elements, there are a few tense moments. There's some cool kills and fight scenes, and even a couple jump scares. It's still got all that shit we watch horror for. In the end, I'd rate 2019 School Live a 9 out of 10, which is surprising because most of the reviews I've seen rate this pretty low. Mainly, they mention the acting. I, I don't know, I thought it was good, and I really liked the characters of Yuki and Magune, I thought their relationship was great, but uh, maybe it's just that I don't know much of anything about being a Japanese person or acting in a Japanese movie. Maybe it was bad. I thought it was good though. If you've seen this movie, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it down in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Have a nice day. Looking for more horror fun? You're goddamn right. Then check out the VHS comic book series, a parody of the horror genre that follows the lives of three teens as they fight to survive a horror movie, where every day is loaded with blood, boobs, and buds. The first two issues can be found in the description below. I was obsessed with the VHS.